Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our next project show. Team Focus from Politecnico di Milano will tell you about their vision of the new kitchen tools for the moon base station. Thank you very much for joining us. If you would like to submit some questions, please use our YouTube chat. The students will be happy to address your questions after their presentation. Now I would like to give the word to the team. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Francesco Memo, the team leader of the design group Focus from Politecnico di Milano in, in Italy. Um, I, before going into the detail of our project show, I would really like to quickly present ourselves. We are Francesco, Laura, Joao, and Ricardo, four students coming from Italy, Colombia, and Brazil, and supervised by the space experts and PhD design professors, Annalisa Dominoni and Benedetto Quacquaro. It's a great pleasure to be part of the Luna 2020 mission, and I would say that we had the opportunity to join the program thanks to the Space for Inspiration course held by our supervisors, which is the first and unique course of space design recognized and supported by the European Space Agency. During our Master of Science in Integrated Product Design, we already had the opportunity to better understand the importance of well-being experiences in space environment. And this was really helpful during the development of the Agluna 2020 project. I'll leave now the word to Joao for the project show introduction. Okay, thank you, Francesco. And first of all, I would like to say that we divided the presentation in three main topics, in three main topics, why, how, and what. And starting with why, we, <clears throat> we, we started doing a, a investigation on the date, on a first investigation on how the astronauts, uh, how the daily lives of astronauts were, were organized. And one thing that really interested us was this case about the partnership between Doubletree and NASA where they, in January of this year, they baked the first cookie in space. So even in an extreme environment such as the ISS, where all of their needs are very closely monitored and attended to, they still look forward to the familiarity of meals and the emotional aspect of food. In a more serious tone, we, another case that popped up during this first investigation was the care with microscopic organisms that inevitably live inside the ISS yet with the astronauts. At least once a week, they are required to have a deep cleaning session of all exposed surfaces in the station to keep all the life support and electronic systems up and running. As mentioned before, the emotional aspect of the meals was something that caught our attention from the beginning. And to recruit the restricted focus of our project, we decided to limit the scope into the kitchen environment. For that, we use uh, this routine mapping tool where we uh, compiled all the tasks and separated in four main categories. The preparation, cooking, eating, and cleaning. And then we highlighted the main opportunities into each of these, these categories. After all of this research, we extracted four main challenges to work with. First, we have volume and fright space. Since one of the most valuable resources in space missions is the fright volume, we need to, uh, all the objects need to be very small and very packable. Second, we have step-by-step -step usage. These, these astronauts are always in a constant state of stress. And considering this, all non-essential equipment should need a specific, uh, should not need a specific instruction manual to be used. Third, we have a backup deployment uh, aspect. So because of time constraints and mission planning, deployment of any backup system is very restricted. And finally, we have functionality first. We, in extreme situations, all objects need to be accounted uh, for the most possibilities they are used into. From these um, main challenges, we extracted the main opportunities combined with what we researched before. So first of all, we, we need to have a compact object. Second, it, need to, it needs to be intuitive. The solution needs to teach itself how to be used. Third, we have to, it has to be easily repairable, so backup parts that can be transported together and easily changed inside the subsystem 
And finally, it needs to be efficient and effective, into, meaning that every decision inside the solution has a specific purpose. Another insight that was brought do, up during our research was that for the past years, we have seen a boom of space-related projects and values. Two cases of that can be seen on the SpaceX Dragon Crew module, which was docked recently into the ISS and led, to, uh, and led to the private partnership with NASA and how it was advertised and watched all over the place. Second, we have the partnership between Heron Preston, which is a high luxury fashion brand, and NASA leverage, leveraging the values and the space excitement for the, their line of clothes. All of this brings, uh, brings hope to us that spacefaring and space exploration goals today will be are already uh, widespread, and we will soon leave a space renaissance similar to the space race. But for us, the most important aspect that we could bring to the project as designers was the materialization of new visions. The way we see to have agency and guide our future towards what we want to, we first need to know what we want and relate the technological and aesthetic implications of that. Two very good examples can be found in the Star Trek series, where in 1968, there was already the concept of the mobile flip phone, which we can see in the image of Captain Kirk with the communicator. Even though it would only be technological vi technologically viable more than 25 years later, at 1995. The same happens with the pad concept where characters of the series would sign documents, search databases, and other tests that for today are trivial. This concept already existed in 1987, whereas the iPad, which revolutionized the tablet market, was launched less than a decade ago, 20, uh, 2012. This is the second important uh, <clears throat> consequence of materializing futures. Once we know what we want to, where we want to go, we can look forward to technology that already exists or that will exist into, uh, in the newer future and apply it into the vision we want to realize. Now I leave the word back to Francesco, which will talk a little bit about our cooperation with Iguna and our past projects. The key point of our project is the cooperation. Even if we are an international team, we have a monodisciplinary background that pushes us to collaborate and cooperate with multidisciplinary teams. Me and Laura, for instance, had the opportunity to physically join the kickoff event in September 2019 in Lausanne, where we directly could discuss with people who approach themes and problems from different perspectives that enabled us to make our project closer to the reality. The focus project is based on Mooney, the new modular lunar base designed by the Polytechnicals team during the previous Eglon edition. It's a new moon station developed inside a lunar lava tube and mostly 3D printed in Revolve in order to protect the entire structure and to minimize the materials that should be brought from Earth. To create a connection between the two Aguilar editions, we decided to pay attention on astronauts' daily lives inside Moni, focusing on their physical and psychological well-being. Hello, everyone. As the final goal of our project, uh, we wanted mainly to consider five aspects uh, that we want to achieve. The first one, it was the well-being of astronauts, allowing them not only to survive, but also to live. Then we create objects that have a circular economy. And finally, we use technologies in new contexts, being able to connect individuals and create new perspectives. So for that reason, uh, we would like to show you the following video, uh, which will explain a bit more about the work uh, that we did with Focus Project. So enjoy the video. the moon. Half a century ago, for the first time in history, we were there. Today, people from all around the world are working together towards one common goal, to go back to the moon. But this time, to stay. Our team is designing for Igluna 2020 new ways to help explorers live and feel at home in this new environment. The focus is on a fundamental need, nutrition. Our multi-continental team designed new tools by investigating both the roots of our cultures and new cutting-edge technologies, 
creating tools for sterilization, preparation and consumption of food. Through additive manufacturing technology and a remarkable use of material properties, our guests will be able to not just eat for survival, but to experience a well-being moment. The project, in its most immediate output, is a set of tools for human nutrition, but it's also a reflection on how our heritage from Earth can be precious and inspirational for a multi-planetary future. So, which is the focus uh, of the, our action plan? Uh, was based on a process of observation of priorities, thus emphasizing in the production of, of food mainly treated by the other groups that are part of Iluna 2020. Despite this, we leave uh, a gap between food production and consumption of food change. For the reason, we would like it to create a bridge between these two concepts. In this way, we want to cover this gap, creating a set of intuitive and functional objects that can have a positive impact in the astronaut's daily life by studying each step necessary to achieve this goal. The experience of food uh, is concerned 360 degrees, the elements that can be part of the process of innovation which have been developed. At the same time, uh, we have tried to understand how uh, food can continue to link uh, with our origins and be integrated into the emotional part of astronauts' uh, daily life. And for the reason, uh, we have UV disinfection, sugamusi, macro and archaid, uh, like this they were born. And here you can see the overview of, of our projects. So our first approach it was regarding cleaning um, by avoiding hard sun organisms, which could be dangerous for human health. And from the other hand, uh, taking care also about primary sources that are fundamental for the integrity of the missions. So this is uh, our key um, points uh, of these steps. And in this, it will be disinfection has a low consumption of energy and we consider all the principles described before. About transformation of food, uh, Sugamusi and Mako provide an alternative cooking with not electricity through completely analog principles and natural compost materials. And about consumption of food, Mako and Archive cover the last process of the food chain. Both subsystems provide an air-like alternative to astronauts, improve their mental well-being and through familiarity and comfort. So what about a manufacturing process? Uh, we try to compare the most suitable options and following the ISRU paradigm, it means in situ resource utilization, to reduce the material and components to be transported. Uh, trying other words to be focused on technologies and uh, take care about how astronauts can be able to print them and after assemble them uh, to the obtain final objects. In the end, um, the main alternatives uh, are sulfur based in concrete, powder based fusion through high output laser device, and cell preparing high temperature synthesis. So in order to be able to understand all requirements related to geometry and technologies, we select uh, that we select for focus subsystems. Uh, together, we had a collaboration with Superforma Lab, which is a marker place located in Milan, and where we print uh, with uh, clay, was uh, 3D machines uh, to evaluate, avoid, and correct possible failures, which maybe have been not seen before. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, Wednesday we will have a meeting with our sponsors and if you are not able to follow us, you can see after in our Instagram live. Thank you. Yeah, so now let's have a look at the, at the concept we developed. Uh, the subsystem are an example on how those tools could look like. For each of them, we based our research on how to get the most of, out of free printing space and combine it uh, with an Earth-like food, uh, food experience. So let's start with Archaic. Archaic is a tool for the production of ice cream on a lunar soil. The idea is to use the external temperature of the moon inside the lava tube to freeze the mixture and deliver a plant-based 
uh, food without the need of electricity. With this tool, explorers could experience a taste of home and a joyful moment. Uh, this is done through a uh, freezing liquid, which maintains the low temperature needed. By adding a fluid mixture into the subsystem and mixing it for a few minutes, the, the host will get a tastefully uh, ice cream. This concept is already proven to be working also on Earth, but with the need of electricity to freeze the cooling block. Instead, on the moon, we could use the same principle by using the average temperature inside the lava tube. Uh, the project was born looking at old ice cream machinery tools and, uh, and adapted them with new materials and new technologies. Multiple tests uh, have been made to define the final, the final shape. The final product is made by two blue hollow containers where the freezing liquid is, is stored. And at the center, we have the aluminum goblet uh, for the ice cream mixture. And while the external shell is made uh, um, out of uh, regolith. So just as Focus was born uh, with the aim of helping astronauts to feel like at home, Marco wants to recreate and revolutionize uh, the whole experience in coffee making. It's a new coffee maker specifically designed to be used without any external heat source, uh, both on Mooney and on Earth. The heat needed to warm up the coffee pot water is given by the zeolite, uh, which is a natural mineral currently used, um, um, mainly used in professional boilers and uh, in the cooking world. In the market, also in this case, uh, um, we are already application of this principle. So uh, we look also in this case at the high feasibility um, in the near future. As we saw yesterday in the, in the SWOX uh, team project show, we will be able to cultivate coffee on the moon, thanks to their greenhouse, and then delivering a moment of relax uh, for the astronauts. Also in this case, most of the components uh, will be 3D, 3D printed um, on the moon. Another example is Suga, Suga Muxi, which is a tool for the transformation of food. It's an oven with passive heating and is designed to cook food by conduction and convention. The principle is the same as, uh, as Marco, as the previous concept. Uh, again, we have a, a cavity where to store the zeolite, and by adding water, we can raise the temperature in the oven and prepare the food. It's inspired by the pre-Columbian history, and the system of channels between internal and external walls allows to feed the zeolite inside. Its temperature and, and shape could transmit a sense of hospitality, creating new rituals and gestures for astronauts living on the moon. Also, in this case, again, we, we focus on imaging um, 3D printed for 3D printing uh, the, most of the parts. Last but not least, we imagine um, um, a UV, uh, UV sterilization system, um, which is an exercise of literally changing context of an already existing and well-developed technology to another context. It's a food sterilizer, and most of the large components could be printed on the moon. Considering that every resource matter in an extreme environment such as the moon, we, we propose to save water and space through the use of UVC lights to disinfect food, surface, tools um, used during the, the food tra transformation process. The UV light technology is already used uh, and proven on Earth, and it's available with small investments. Because of the size of the concept, the structure can be folded, and inspiration for this were found in the well-known origami. The project itself is um, comprised of an uh, electronic model with a new silhouette on and off interface and batteries, and this is all that is packed to the habitat. The other part of the project is the design of a 3D printed regularly in chasing, to be produced also in this case uh, through a uh, uh, 3D printing regularly. System. Just to sum up, we stress from the very beginning the importance of the well-being experiences in space environments. And we repeated that our project's main aim was to help astronauts to feel like home. In order to achieve these goals, the role of design and designers in the space industry is extremely important. Our ability to face challenges as opportunities to be seized and not as obstacles to be avoided, our help us to approach problems from different perspectives and points of view. The space branch represents a great challenge that provides designers a completely new planning area in which to operate. 
giving them the possibility to show how lateral technological innovations can support human well-being in extreme conditions. By thinking outside the box, designers can really help astronauts to live in space rather than simply survive. All the objects we developed and we explained to you could be useful also on Earth. So Gamuzi and Mako enabled to cook food and to prepare coffee in all those situations in which no energy or heat sources are available, like during trips, camper tours, or inside holiday homes. The UV disinfection tool represents a low energy alternative for cleaning food, while archaic can be really useful to prepare ice creams, rediscovering ancient gestures and avoiding the electricity use. This was our presentation. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you found it interesting and we will be available for any doubt. Thank you again. Thank you very much for your very beautiful and very inspiring presentation. Um, I see that the audience enjoyed your show as well. We have a lot of very nice comments and interesting questions in our YouTube chat. So I'd like to start with our Q&A session. Um, somebody is uh, writing in our YouTube chat that the food transformation is sometimes less emphasized and it's great to see your approach. Uh, do you know what is the current state of art at ESA, NASA? Did you do some research on that topic? Uh, yeah. Actually, the, this was the one of the starting points before our trajectory inside Iguna. And during the, the research for another project, we realized that most of the food that they, they consume into the ISS, which is our parallel today, can, it, it's very similar to what we consume on Earth. The most different aspect of it is that they don't have fresh a fresh produce. So, for example, have fruits or vegetables that are packed inside the ISS. Well, to, to go to the ISS, they last uh, at most two weeks. And with this, we we are trying to to make this connection. Since a lot of other groups inside the group are already working on this production part, we realized that maybe we could transform it into give a platform to transformation of this produce. But today, uh, in uh, relating to the, to the food consumption in the ISS, it's basically the same, except for the fresh produce aspect of it. Thank you very much for the answer. And indeed, it was really great to see during this year, your interaction with other teams and implementing your concept together with them. Um, a little bit more about your vision for the future. So when do you think um, we will actually be focused on um, the benefits and wellness of the astronauts rather than on the critical elements on the, of the space mission? So I guess at the moment it's not yet the time, but what do you feel when, when the time will come? We, we are very hopeful that with the, the upcoming private companies and the, the um, the less resources spent to go to space, even more so now that SpaceX proved that they can make uh, crew flights, we, we start to see uh, another boom in space tourism. And if we put these two aspects together, we, uh, we, are start, we will start seeing the, um, the space as something, uh, as an experience and not something to be scientifically approached. So in, instead of making a change from mission critical elements, because honestly, we, we don't think it's ever going to be different since it, it's such a harsh context. Uh, we think that a pleasure, not, not pleasure in, in the vulgar, vulgar sense, but a pleasure as a nice experience will start to be another focus of space missions. Thank you very much for your answer. And on the technological side, when do you think this kind of technology will be available, will be used? We, one of the, the main aspects of the, the FOCUS uh, project was trying to, was finding technolo uh, technologies that, as we said, are either already existing or would be very marketable very soon. And when we comprise the UVC radiation, the the LED, uh, the, um, the zeolite, and also the, the gelato making uh, process, 
we already have uh, we we already have the technology to make this transition. Now we need to test in a in a space environment because due due to COVID reasons and other other various reasons we couldn't make lab tests or control tests of, of the technology. But the the proof of concept is already done. So the transition is mainly a question of validation. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations on your project and looking forward to actually see the technology implemented soon. Um, I have a follow-up question. I think you mentioned it into your presentation, but uh, someone from the audience is asking, are you, um, what's the vision to use the Luna regolith as a material for your products? Uh, I think Laura can answer this question, since we she she was responsible for for the material part of the project. Uh, yes, conceptually uh, we would like to use regolith, but in this case uh, it's not really possible for us to taste it. So we tried to find the closer material that we were able to print it, and for the reason we we did it with clay that we saw that being mineral, they have a lot of aspects that can be super similar. So in this way, uh, we were able, thanks to our sponsors, to print them and see which are the constraints and which are really the main points that uh, we can consider in a future concept, we hope, <laughs> that with printing regolith. Great, thank you very much. And uh, I have another question. Do you think it would make sense to produce these tools now to be used on Earth? If yes, do you plan it? And do you plan to put them on the market? That's a great question. Uh, since, since we already we already said that the technology is available, the, the main concern right now is making, is making the, is regarding the UVC tool. Since, the UVC radiation is so uh, dangerous in, in, a, in the form that it, it was applied in this project. It, we very carefully put lots of safety nets inside the project. And if we replicate into homesteads, maybe we don't have the same care or using, the te uh, using that technology. Uh, regarding zeolite, and we already have some applications for example for the past in the past three years if i'm not mistaken uh we there there was already a chef that were cooked in venice using zeolite and it, it, he was serving only only dishes cooked uh, through the zeolite method which is very simple you you have the zeolite and you you add water and then you have a, a, therm, a thermal reaction that generates heat so we we see it a very <laughs> we see it uh, we see a very possible way to put it them on the market. However, the the main focus we we wanted to seize the opportunity in this project to to realize futures. So th this is why we decided to go into uh, in this movement. We we have technology the technology that we have on Earth and maybe we can apply on space and we think we can, and this. This movement, we we wanted to inspire inspire other people to do the same to start looking for opportunities of in the technological innovation here on Earth. Thank you very much. It's great to see your motivation and inspiration. And in fact, I noticed there was even another question from the audience asking again, "Do you have your products for sale?" <laughs> so. Um, somebody is also asking in the in our YouTube chat, will you bring your system to Igluna 2021 and will be able to try your gelato? Oh, uh, I think Francesco can can answer this one uh, a little bit better because he was the responsible, the, the, the team leader we're in contact with Igluna. Well, we were thinking about it, but we, we have uh, several constraints from now to the Igluna 2021. Uh, mission. First of all, we are going to, to finish our studies in integrated product design at the Politecnico di Milano. So probably we can organize with our supervisors the next generation of designers and space experts for the Igonaut 2021. As we continued 
and we used Mooney, what the Polytechnicals did last year during the Agluna 2019 edition as the starting point of our project. Probably our idea and our mission can be the starting point for the 2000, 2021 mission from other students from the Politecnico di Milano. Thank you, looking forward to the next year edition. Um, now I have some more technical questions about the current, current projects. Um, somebody is asking, how do you prevent water absorption into the material? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura and Francesco, I think if you, if you jump in on it, uh, yes, of course. Uh, actually, uh, with the material that we are using, Zeolit, uh, it absorbs directly the water, so we don't have this type of problems. Because as uh, Joe explained before, um, there is this kind of chemical physical reactions that permits that Zeolit absorb the water that we will introduce, and after that, uh, it will be evaporated and produce heat. So yes, actually, we don't have these kind of problems, even though, yes, it, it's a super good question. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, I have another question about the UVC. Could you remind us, uh, is the UVC safe? What safety measures you applied for the project? Okay, um, first, first I need to explain a little bit how you, UV rays work. So we have three main categories of ultraviolet rays. We have UVA, which is completely safe to humans, and it works as um, yeah, it's the, the type of light we use in the in in parties where we want to have that dark light and this type of stuff. It's also responsible for for tanning procedure. So we get tan because we get exposed to UVA. UVB on the other hand, which has uh, a shorter wavelength, it, it, instead of um, in, instead of tanning, it starts to burn the skin. It, it has more energy and it starts to penetrate the skin and the UVB is what causes sunburns. UVC, on the other hand, we don't have on Earth. It's completely absorbed by the ozone layer. So every UVC ray you see is is produced outside, either outside of Earth or by artificial means. On uh, because it has such a short length and it doesn't even penetrate the ozone layer, if anything can stop it from spreading. So we used uh, a, po a polymer origami shape to encapsulate the um, the UVC inside the system, and we put two infrared ray, uh, infrared sensors inside of it. So any time you turn it on, it starts to, it calibrates the UV, the infrared. And if, if it detects any, any different uh, spectrum from what it calibrated, which we, it would happen if you would open the casing of it, it shuts down the, the, the system completely. Because we, as you, as you said, UVC is not safe for humans. That said, there is some research on a new type of UV rays called UV far UVC, which theoretically it, it's safe, it, it's harmful enough to to disinfect surfaces, but it's not. Uh, it, it's it, its wavelength is short enough that it doesn't penetrate skin. So it should be safe for humans, but there, there are tons of research on it. And we decided, since it's so recent, recent, we decided to not use it. Thank you very much for this very detailed answer. Uh, it's really great to see how much research you have done and how, how well you thought through every detail of this project. It's a pity that we didn't have the chance to, to try and see all of your project this year. Um, so now that we were talking about the UVC and I remember you plan it as an origami shape kind of, I have a question from the chat. Somebody is asking, have you thought about making origami shapes since saving volume in space is critical? So I guess it's uh, regarding the, the other objects. Have you thought about origami shapes for them as well? Um, if any, anyone else wants to answer this one too or complement my answer, we did it. The, the attractive 
uh, the attractive part of origami in the UVC aspect mainly was that if you take a look at all the four projects, we have uh, three completely analogic projects and one that is heavily electronic. Because this single one is electronic, we decided to save space as much as possible on this one. And because of that, we applied the origami shape. So because of, uh, since we are saving as much volume as possible, the only thing to be shipped inside the, the UV system is the electronics and the, and the folding. Because we, we needed something that would be expandable and also, and at the same time, it would be movable, let's say. The other projects don't need that. And because of that, we decided to, to mainly use the 3D printed parts that we, we thought on using the regolith, as we explained before. We, we could probably transfer the, the origami shape to the other ones, but we, did, we didn't see the need of it. Thank you very much. Um, somebody is asking also, how did the idea come from? I remember you were talking a little bit about this at the beginning of your presentation, but in case you would like to add something, how did it start and why did you choose exactly these four objects? Um, this was mainly personal. From we, we decided from the beginning to have each person uh, responsible for a single for a single subsystem, and and have um, something that tied them all together. Then uh, we we took a look at all the environments we could work inside the space station because since the beginning we we thought about using uh, the Mooney project as a basis for it and. The, if you take a look at the Mooney thesis or, or, or at the Mooney uh, results, they have a very large uh, common room, which they use for most of, of their activities. So they use for cooking, they use for uh, leisure, and since it, it was one of the, the more, one of the biggest rooms inside the, the concept of Mooney, we decided to approach it in and involve all of the other projects inside. So we, instead of using the living quarters, the, the bathrooms, or the, these other facilities, we decided to use the common room just to emphasize the emotional aspect of it. And among all of possible um, tasks, we, food was one that was very attractive for us because we, we are in an in a immersed in an Italian culture and meals are bonding for us. It's very, it's a very emotional thing. Thank you very much for this very nice answer. Um, I do not see any further questions from our chat, but we still have a little bit of time. Um, this is your chance in case there is something you would like to add to your presentation. If not, then uh, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you very much for your very nice presentation. It was a very inspiring project show. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for submitting your questions. That was also a very nice discussion afterwards. Um, thank you for watching us. Please stay tuned. We have a guest from AstroCast um, giving a talk soon. Um, thank you, the team, and thank you, everyone, for watching us. Have a nice day and goodbye.